Welcome to Educator.com's Application Essay course. This lesson is an overview. Let's get started. There we go. All right, first things first. This course is going to teach you how to write application essays, which are also called personal statements, for pretty much anything academic. So if you're applying to college, if you're applying to grad school, if you're applying to, for a scholarship, just about anything in the academic field, this course is going to teach you how to write that essay. We're going to break everything down, make it super easy, super simple. But first things first, the most important rule of writing application essays is don't panic. Seriously, I can see you hyperventilating on the other side of the screen. Stop it. <laughs> Breathe, take a breath, eat a cookie, whatever you have to do. Don't panic. This is not nearly as scary as it looks. If you think about it, you've probably toured whatever school or program you're trying to get into. Think about the people you saw walking around. Yes, some of them probably came across as smart. Some of them probably also came across as too dumb to open a door by themselves. Those people got into college or grad school or whatever as well. You have to be about as smart and about as talented as those people. You can do that, so don't panic. We're going to make everything super, super simple in this course. We're going to explain every step of the process. We're going to give you lots of good tips. You are going to be just fine. So whatever you do, don't panic. All right, so here's the overview of the overview. We're going to start by asking, what do schools not want? We're going to dispel some common myths about what colleges and grad schools and all these other programs are actually looking for. Then we're going to look at what they do want. Three things that all of these schools are looking for that you have to prove you have. Now, before you freak out, there are three things that almost everybody has already, so calm down. And then finally, we're going to do a brief overview of how this whole course will work. We're going to look at what goes on in every single lesson, so that if you're looking for help on a particular part of the writing process, you can skip to that lesson. Although, I do recommend you watch the whole course because it's awesome. All right, let's begin with what these schools are not looking for. First of all, they are not looking for perfection. They are not looking for somebody who has crossed every single T and dotted every single I in the history of the universe. They are not looking for someone with a perfect A plus average. They are not looking for, they're not looking for somebody who walks into their school already qualified to graduate. If you think about it, you're trying to get into the school so you can learn things. They understand that there are things you have not yet learned. So they're not looking for you to be perfect. Don't feel like you have to be. Second of all, they are not looking for genius. They are not looking for the next Stephen Hawking. They are, you know, art schools are not looking for the next Baryshnikov. They are not looking for the next William Shakespeare. They're not looking for anything like genius. You don't have to be the smartest person in the history of the world in order to get into these schools. If you think about it, you've been to these schools, like I said, look around. Normal people everywhere you look. You don't have to be a genius. They're not looking for genius. In fact, genius kind of tends to annoy professors, so. You're in good shape there. And finally, they are not looking for flattery. They're not looking for an essay where you go, oh, this is the best school ever. I've been trying all my life to get into Harvard. I'm going to die if I don't get in because you're so magnificent. They know they're a good school. In fact, most of them have an inflated idea of their own value. They don't need you to tell them. And if you pour it on too thick, they're gonna think you're up to something. So, they're not looking for perfection, they're not looking for genius, and they're not looking for flattery, which is good because we're not going to teach you how to do any of those things. We're going to teach you how to write an essay that will actually get you in. So what are they looking for? Well, to begin with, they are looking for preparation. Are you academically and socially prepared to attend this school? If you're applying to college, did you pay attention in high school? Did you learn what you were supposed to learn in your classes? Did you get reasonably good grades? There are certain skills that you need in order to be in college or to be in grad school or to be in a scholarship program, and you have to have those skills coming in. Now, before you freak out, most of those skills are things like being able to write a coherent essay, being able to read and get information from a book, being able to do a modest amount of research. If you don't know something and you need to find it out for a class, being able to go to the library, ask the librarian, use the database, all that stuff, or learn how to do those things if you don't know. So, if you are academically prepared, you did a good job in your previous classes, you're pretty much up there ready to start, then you're in good shape for element number one. Second thing they're looking for is talent. Now, I know I said they aren't looking for genius, but talent applies particularly in certain fields. Do you have the necessary natural ability to succeed in your field of study? 
So, for example, if you're applying for a music scholarship or to a music school, are you tone deaf? No, really, actually tone deaf. Not just I have a bad ear, but completely unable to distinguish tones. If you're tone deaf, you probably should not be applying to a music conservatory. But if you're applying to a music conservatory and you do have an ear for tone, and you can play an instrument with some reasonable degree of skill or sing reasonably well, congratulations, you made the talent pool. And the third thing they're looking for is fit. Will you be an asset to the school environment? Now think about this from the point of view of an, app, of an admissions officer, okay? They're looking at your application. They're thinking, okay, number one, is there anything I can use to eliminate this person from the huge pool of applicants? If there isn't, one of the things they're looking at is, is this person going to burn down the chemistry lab or the dormitory or whatever, okay? You need to convince them that you're not a psychopath, you're not incompetent, and you're not going to be a major problem. And if all possible, you'd like to convince them that you are actually going to be beneficial to the campus environment. You're somebody who's going to make friends. You're going to be a leader on your sports team. You're going to be an asset to whatever classes you're in. Those are the kinds of things that they're looking for. These schools are in the business of teaching people, but they're also in the business of teaching groups of people. So if you are an asset to the group that you're in, you're somebody that they want in their school. So. As you're looking at your application essays and as you're planning what you're going to do, remember, you need to convince them that you have preparation, you're ready to go, that you have talent, you have the natural ability that you need, which isn't nearly as great as you think it is, and that you have the fit. You are going to be a great part of this school, which, chances are, you are. All right, let's take a brief look at how this course will work. Lesson one is obviously the overview. That's what we're doing right now. We're going over what's going to happen in the course. Lesson two is going to be all about the prompt. We're going to talk about the different kinds of prompts. There are five major categories of prompts that we're going to look at. And if you know what category you're dealing with, you know how to answer it. So we're going to look at how the prompts work and how to answer them. Then we're going to look at choosing a topic. Most essay prompts will give you a pretty wide range of topics to choose from, and I'm going to show you how to narrow it down. Then we're going to look at outlining. Yeah, I know you probably did this in sixth grade or whatever, but I'm going to show you some neat tricks for outlining quickly and well, and how to do it no muss, no fuss. All right, then we've got a couple of lessons on writing. Writing part one is the beginning, how to write a good hook, how to write a good opening. That first sentence that drives you absolutely berserk, I'm going to teach you how to kill that first sentence. Lesson six is writing part two, the middle and the end, how to develop your main ideas and how to wrap it all up. Lesson seven is revision, how to go back through your essay and make it even better. Pretty simple, but a bit complex. Lesson eight is after you've written all these little steps that you need to do to make your essay as perfect as it can possibly be after you think you're done writing. All right, and then lesson nine is a special lesson on hyper-competitive schools or really competitive schools. Some of you are probably watching this course because you want to get into Harvard or you want to get into Stanford or MIT. I've taught students who got into Harvard. I've taught students who got into Stanford and Princeton and Yale and all kinds of other ones. So I've got a couple of special notes for you guys on how to get into those particular schools. And finally, lesson 10 is on specific fields. So if you're trying to write an application essay for law school, or medical school, or some really specialized field of study, we've got some special tips just for you. Now, as you go through this course, when in doubt, remember the lesson of the balance beam. This is a story that I like to tell to help students get an idea of what they're actually doing. When I was a little kid, I took gymnastics class. Uh, and I was really good at anything that involved being on the floor. I was really good at tumbling, I was really good at doing somersaults, pretty much anything that involved falling over I was great at. Obviously I didn't have the world's greatest sense of balance, but falling down I was good at. The balance beam I absolutely hated because you have to get up on this narrow beam and walk across it and the whole class is watching you and everybody's just wishing for you to fall on the mat. When you're five or six years old this is the worst thing in the universe. I hated the balance beam and we had to do stuff on it every class. And one day my dad came to pick me up from class. And I told him that I hated the balance beam, and, I, and he'd see me fall off of it because I always got so freaked out when I got up there. And he says, well, look at the balance beam for a minute. Fine. I look at it. It hates me. And he says, how wide is it? And I kind of look at it. I'm like, oh, you know, about as wide as my hand when it's spread out because, you know, I had a small hand. I was a kid. Uh, and he goes, yeah, that's almost the same width as a curb on the sidewalk. You know, that little strip of concrete between the grass and the street, just the curb? It's about as wide as a curb. And I go, yeah, so what? And he goes, you walk on curbs all the time. 
When we go for walks, you are always walking on the curb, one foot in front of the other. Sometimes you have your arms out, most of the time you don't. You never fall off a curb unless someone hits you from the side and pushes you. I say, yeah, so? And he goes, this is exactly the same. All, you've been walking on curbs your whole life. The balance beam is just a curb that happens to be higher up in the air. And I go, yeah, it's higher up in the air. And everyone's staring at me. He goes, yeah, but if you don't fall off, it doesn't matter that it's high up in the air. This is something that you have done for most of your life. It's just in slightly different circumstances, but the action that you're undertaking is the same. So, as you're writing your application essays for this class and for whatever you're applying for, remember the lesson of the balance beam. This is something you have probably been doing your whole life. You've written a ton of essays. These are actually shorter and simpler. You've written papers. You've done your research. You've done all of this stuff before. The stakes are higher, but you're not going to fall. All you're doing is walking on a curb. So, next time you're working on an essay and you get freaked out, just remember the balance beam is a curb that happens to be two or three feet in the air. There's really nothing to be afraid of. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching Educator.com.